and open your hymnals to number 778 and join in singing Sing of Mary, Meek and Lowly. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Brothers and sisters, in tonight's gospel, we hear, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus tells us this, this is the greatest commandment and the foundation of all the law and the prophets. Mindful of how difficult a call, how we often fail in obeying this command, let us call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you strengthen us for the journey of faith. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you intercede for us at the right hand of God. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are love incarnate, now and forever. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We can give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. 
Our readings tonight can be found at 1067 in your Gathers book. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, You shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If ever you wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset, for this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. Thanks. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among you for your sake.
and you became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For from you, the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you, and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The gospel of the Lord. As I was sitting with this gospel this week, I was wondering to myself, is this the hardest of all gospel passages for us to follow? Most likely our impulse would be to say no because we could think of so many others that seem even more demanding to forgive those who've hurt us, love our enemies, take up our crosses in following Jesus. They seem far more difficult. And when we hear this command to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself, the familiarity of it, the fact that it sounds like something so promising, so idealistic, we can kind of nod in agreement without really thinking and considering how incredibly challenging this is. Particularly for us living here in the, in the Western world or the first world in 2023, where our lives are so accustomed to comfort and convenience, where even those who are struggling financially, comparatively speaking to many of our ancestors and so many of our brothers and sisters around the globe, would be seen as wealthy. 
Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. The impact of those words can be lost when we think about where people are when it comes to their mind, heart, and soul, and how our comfort, convenience, and wealth have impacted those things. For example, when it comes to the mind, this year, university professors were discussing how to deal with this thing called chat GPT, which is this artificial intelligence computer program that's taken cheating to a whole new level. Supposedly, you can go online, type into the program whatever topic you're studying, even direct it to write a paper that's highly specific and even customized to sound as if it's a 20-year-old college student writing it. Somebody told me that I could go on there and say to this thing, here are the scriptures I'm looking at and give them my website where I post my homilies, and it could write a homily for me sounding the way I would sound. I haven't even thought about looking at it because it just creeped me out beyond imagination. But that this is a legitimate thing that academics are having quite a difficult time dealing with in all kinds of different situations with their students is a reality that is part of our world. Just discussing this with a few professors, I couldn't help but flash back. I, like, I never thought I'd say this, but back in my day, cheating was a lot more complicated. In my philosophy class in college, a friend of mine got caught plagiarizing something. And I remember our professor pointed out to them how hard they had worked to find something, to research, and to rewrite it in a way to cover it up, that had they just put a little more effort in, they could have legitimately written the paper instead of causing this, committing this academic fraud. But now it's this competition between computers. The cheater having to produce a paper and the professor hoping that their computer can identify that it's inauthentic. That's just one example of how there's been a dumbing down of the mind. When it comes to the heart, <laughs> a few years ago, a priest friend had this young man explaining how he was planning on asking his girlfriend to marry him. And he detailed how he scouted out the location, he hired a photographer to hide in the bushes and have a drone overhead, arranged the families to be there for a little party afterwards. All he needed from the priest was prayers for good weather. My friend, who happens to be a little bit more frank and unfiltered than I am, if you can believe that or not, replied to the guy, romance is dead. The poor guy kind of had his jaw dropped because he wasn't expecting that reaction. And I probably wouldn't have said that and, or like that to a guy who's obviously put time and energy and thought into making this special occasion, but I see my friend's point that so often with engagements and weddings, mainly because they become such expensive enterprises, that sometimes people can spend more time, energy, and resources to create an event than focusing on the genuine emotion, the sincere affection. And that's just one dramatic example of how the heart has been co-opted. The advertisements telling us to demonstrate our love for those closest to us is found in buying something for Christmas have already been airing for weeks. So there are a lot of examples that we can see in our own day and age. And as for the soul, <laughs> that sense of the eternal nature of a person is so foreign to a growing and increasingly vocal number of people. Just look at the derogatory way that prayer is treated in public discourse, where prayer shaming has become a thing. People will try to cancel you for daring to say that you're praying in response to something notable or something significant, a, a crisis or a tragedy. Just this past week, you could see that happening, whether it was for the victims of the mass shooting in Maine or all the horrors of war inflicting violence and death on countless numbers of innocent people and a growing number of places throughout the world. Even when Pope Francis asked the world to unite in a day of fasting and prayer this past Friday, it wasn't hard to find people mocking and deriding it and then pivoting it to a purely political discussion where they wanted to criticize things that were being and said or done by anyone who was participating in prayer, including the Pope. Those were just some of the things and realities that hit me sitting with this gospel. How Jesus reminds us this greatest of commandments in all the law is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, 
and all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Why it's so difficult and challenging just on very basic levels. The comfort and convenience of our world has numbed so many hearts and minds. The wealth of our world has caused many to devalue or even deny their souls. And love, well, that's been trivialized and manipulated to being something simply a pleasure that I want. Heck, McDonald's has been for decades marketing that you can love a Big Mac, you can love a filet of fish or an order of french fries in what's been described as their most successful marketing campaign ever, the I'm Loving It campaign. You might enjoy a Big Mac, but no, you can't love a hamburger or a fast food restaurant. Praise God, we're here together at the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Whether you're a learned theologian, you're here because someone dragged you to CCD or to faith formation, and you know there's something of value, even if you can hard find it, articulate it, and you, know, you just come on a regular basis because of that, or that you stumbled here and you're unsure of why you found yourself here. It's a tremendous thing for us to be here and to hear these scriptures proclaimed, because we believe that every time we gather for this sacred assembly and these words are proclaimed. We're not reading some historical lesson or, or Bible study. God himself is speaking to us in this present moment. And each of us knows without providing a news report of the lack of peace in the world, in our nation, and in our lives that we're experiencing, how unsettled and unsatisfied so many around us are, so many of us are feeling, how helpless we are in the face of so many problems that threaten us, and how hopeless so many are becoming as they double down and triple down on turning away from God and trying to convince themselves and others that when everyone falls in line with whatever political talking point is being amplified at the moment, or whatever cause is in fashion, then, everything will be fine. Yet, inevitably, in every time, this has failed, and it always will fail. Praise God, we find ourselves here, and thank God, he comes to us, and he speaks to us in these scriptures tonight. Words that speak to the deepest longings of our hearts, that desire peace, I find a, a lack of fulfillment from all the comforts and conveniences and wealth of the world. And in these most familiar of words, Jesus himself is providing us the answer. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Pointing us to the reality that it's when we have a reverence for God's law that we see the commandments as God's gift to us, that they're not some arbitrary things that are leveled just to control and inhibit humanity, but that they're commands meant for authentic freedom, for our ultimate happiness, for human beings to flourish and to, to live in peace with one another. But that can only be fully realized when love is understood and treated just as reverently and seen as just as essential. This one Catholic theologian pointed out, without love, the law is cold. And without law, love is just emotion. So Jesus calling us to love God with all our heart means having our emotions and our affections directed to him. With all our minds means to actively engage our intellects, to know God, to want to learn about him, to understand the truth of who he is. And with our, all our souls, where we recognize the innermost part of ourselves, that place where we desire greater, meaningful things, things that are not fleeting, that long to be satisfied and fulfilled, that innermost part that is our soul. And not allowing ourselves to be tempted to think that that soul is going to be somehow satisfied by something we can purchase. A fellow human being can't even fulfill our soul as well-intentioned as any one of them might be, as intimately close as they can be, like a spouse or a parent or a sibling, simply because they're a fellow, fallen, broken human being as we are. So we have to focus our souls on God, 
knowing he's the all-good, all-loving creator of all things, and he wants to fulfill us now and for all eternity. He wants us to have that peace that the world cannot give. He wants us to have him and to be united with him in his perfect love. It's when we get our hearts, minds, and souls right about what they are and where those energies need to be directed that the commandment starts to be realized and starts to make sense. And then when that genuinely and sincerely happens, love of neighbor is almost instinctual because we're not focused on ourselves. We're not weighed down by pettiness. We're not competing with one another. There's no room for that. There's no time for that. To this day, one of my most memorable moments in my time in campus ministry has been when we took a group of students on a mission trip to Appalachia. The students had to fundraise to spend their spring break on this trip. They took a 13-hour van ride from Montclair, New Jersey to Kentucky with yourself, myself driving, sleeping in these massive rooms that accommodated 30 women in one and 30 men in the other in bunk beds, and having communal showers and bathrooms. They had to wake up at 5 a.m. for 5.30 mass so that they could have breakfast at 6. And then we separated as a group and were sent off to these different work sites with a whole group of other people that we had never met before just to go rebuild homes for people who were poor and elderly and ill. And the rides to all these work sites could be 30 to 60 minutes. The days were long and hard. They were doing manual labor for a solid eight hours with the hope that within the four days we were there and the other weeks that other groups came in and part of this program, that we could help rebuild or do some serious renovations to these homes that were just in terrible condition. Anyway, this one night, we had gathered all of our students as we did every night to just kind of go over our day and how everything went as we just did kind of a check-in on each of them. And at this one point, this one girl had been really quiet and reflective And out of nowhere, she just said, why is it I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I haven't been able to connect on my phone because there's no Wi-Fi and I can't even see any social media. These beds and showers are what they are. And yet I don't know if I've ever felt more joy and more peace in my life. She needed this dramatic experience to help convince her of what Jesus is saying in this gospel, to realize that in her own life. And we pointed out to her that it was her openness in coming, her her stepping in faith and putting God and others first to help stretch her understanding and for her to really understand this lesson. God is constantly putting opportunities like this out there for every single one of us. We can't all go on a mission trip to rebuild a home in Appalachia. But even here, even now, in our own time and place, we can be stretched and start to experience why this is the first and most important commandment if we take the words seriously and constantly use them to challenge us as we ask, is what I'm about to say or not say demonstrating that I love the Lord God with all my heart? Is what I'm doing going to illustrate I love the Lord God with all my soul? is when I'm pursuing, show that I love the Lord God with all my mind. Is the world different around me because my love of God is so all-consuming, I don't even realize how I love my neighbor as myself. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men, for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. 
for our sake he was crucified by Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. May our prayers be directed towards God's will and for his mercy. For our young people receiving First Holy Communion this Sunday, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intercession of Our Lady of Lords for healing and strength for all those who suffer in illness, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who live with financial and material hardship, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace to come among the people of Israel and Palestine, for eternal rest of the deceased and healing for the injured and grieving, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved deceased, Marie Auguste, Patricia DeSantis, Mary Sharkey, Nicole Colombo, and for all whom we remember in our parish book of life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, for the eternal rest of Fran Glennon, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers and those we keep in the silence of our hearts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing, Hold On to Love, which is on your yellow music sheets.
my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Be Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father of mercies and faithful God, if you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners. And he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name. And we sing the hymn of your glory, as without it, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which shall be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended. He took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom we led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. 
Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope, Joseph our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of your brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them fullness of life. Grant also to us that when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the apostles and martyrs, St. Simon and St. Jude, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. <coughs> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, by the help of your mercy. We may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait blessed hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We give him the power and the glory of yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. If not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace.
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs, we may one day possess the truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks.